On this episode of the Ask Mike Reinald Show, we talk about dealing with anterior knee pain after ACL reconstruction surgery. The Ask Mike Reinald Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I am here, Champion PT Performance, answering your questions. Anything you want to talk about, physical therapy, sports performance, career advice, whatever, head to MikeReynolds.com. Hit that podcast link, ask us a question, and be sure to subscribe so that way you can see us answering some of these questions in the future. Let's see, who do we have today? Uh, Lenny McCrina, Jonah Monlock, Dewesh Podell, Mike Scudo, Kevin Coughlin, Dave Tilly, Dan Pope. I did a spiral this time. That was the first time I think I've done that um, in the Zoom call. But uh, we're all here helping you with this one. Um, What do we have for students today, Len? We have an amazing group of students that I have really grown attached to. Great to have you. Uh, reading questions for this episode will be Jake Woodrich from Duville University. Can't wait to look into the history of Duville. We also have Daniel Quillen from Mary Baldwin University, I think, not a college, Mary Baldwin University. We have Chris Clary from Anderson University, and we have Matt Ellison from University of Wisconsin at La Crosse. And we have Anthony Vedetto from the Massachusetts College of Health Sciences of Pharmacies and Engineers Associations of America University. That was not that was nice. I like that. Um, I feel like Vedetto has done a really good job with the recording of these yeah. episodes here. Yeah. 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 Sitting there, taking it all in. Contributing. Contributing yeah, a lot. Get, he, he's getting ready. He's preparing. That, that's what it's about. I like that. That's good. So what do we have yes. for a question today, Jake? <clears throat> Okay, so we have Jeff from New Jersey. Um, I've been working the quad more after ACL reconstruction, incorporating things like full range, open kinetic chain knee extension, and earlier progressive loading. I've noticed that I'm seeing more people experience anterior knee pain, especially after a patellar tendon graft. How do you balance gaining strength and not flaring up the knee? Awesome. Good question. That's a good question, right? I thought that was a real relevant question because I think a lot of people are are probably doing this, right? You know, social media is pushing them a little bit to get more aggressive. And I bet for a lot of people, it's probably the first time they've they've started to get a little bit more aggressive and you're seeing a little bit of a bounce back. Um, so why don't we start with that, right? And, and maybe Len, you can start off a little bit like, you know, how common is anterior knee pain after ACL reconstruction, especially patellar tendon graft, and do you do you think part of this trend in getting a little bit more aggressive is going to make that worse? Is or or you know is there something we can do better? What what do you think about this? I know you think about this a lot. I think about it a lot. Um, actually, I talk about it a decent amount because <laughs> you know, with uh, yeah, I mean when you when we ha- always have students coming in, you know, I let them kind of think through some of our ACLs and, and write programs for them, and it's always interesting to see the the, the variations and what they think should be going on. Um, but I definitely think the social media trend um, of, you know, loading it and now the open chain thing is socially acceptable um, by, <laughs> on social media. <laughs> I like to rephrase that. <laughs> full, full open kinetic chain, um, which I agree with. I'm not against that. I think it's timing it. Um, when, when you load the tissue early, especially a patella tendon graft, you have a chance of irritating it, right? And remember that you have a patella tendon that's like three centimeters wide and they take the middle third of it. So now that area has to scar down and they took bone and bone plugs out from the patella and the tibia. There's a lot that can get irritated very easily. And so if we are trying to show the patient that, you know, we can load them, we want to load you, we want to get the quads back and we keep loading, loading, loading the extensor mechanism, something's got to give, whether it's the fat pad, the patella tendon itself, or even worse case is the bones, the tibia or the, or the patella, where you can get a fracture of the patella. And knock on wood, that's not, never happened to me. But if you load it too early, too quickly with, you know, single leg squats or squats or even knee extensions, I would imagine it's all going to irritate the area and it's never going to heal correctly. And then you run the risk of that. So 
Um, I don't get Len, a lot of... Len, you, you can go knees over toes. It's a fact now. It's science. <laughs> right. I'm going to create a social media account called Knees Over Toes. <laughs> um, but I, 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 so I, I want to load it. Uh, trust me, I want to load my patients. There's going to be a window, right, where you're getting the need to calm down. And that's for me, that's about four to six weeks is that window. Um, what am I doing in that meantime? I'm getting swelling out. I'm getting patella mobility. I'm getting flexion range of motion. I'm getting extension range of motion. I'm slowly getting them to wear, uh, bear weight on their extremity. And I'm monitoring. I'm, I'm doing some soft tissue work at that area to get the, the tissue to move better. And I'm slowly adding stuff to see how they're doing. Uh, because I know that at six, seven, eight weeks, I can then be a little bit more aggressive and not worry about anterior knee pain. My patients don't, don't get anterior knee pain very rarely. It is. It's very transient, very short-lived. So you got to slowly bring them along and have a system, a systematic approach to what you're doing. And your experiences will guide it. You'll figure it out, hopefully. If not, you're just going to keep getting anterior knee pain in those patients. But you can't load it too quickly. Give that four to six-week window uh, a chance for things to heal down and get that motion back and get the knee to calm down. Yeah, so it's not that we're against all this stuff. Like, yes, you need right. to do progressive loading stuff. I mean, maybe you somehow tip the scales, right? Maybe you just did a little too much too soon or too often or whatever it may be. But uh, Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I can just speak to a case that Chris and I are working with. Um, this girl's like super competitive, you know, ACL. And she, she came to us a little bit later. So it's more like she came in like the three-month phase. And it was just a mixture of all of the factors just kind of ramped up her volume just too fast, too quick. So, you know, I never want to speak ill of past therapist. She did a great job, but it seems like when you look at her program, it was just like super quad heavy. It was like squatting, step up, step down, knee extension. And there wasn't a lot of like mixed programming going on along with doing stuff. So she was doing a really quad dominant program that was pretty much all quad and she got cleared to run just objectively on a protocol. So she started running. And of course she's so competitive. She was going hard on her runs when she shouldn't have been. And then she started to go back to like right. jumping landing because she was cleared. So it wasn't that anyone did anything like particularly wrong, but it was just like, it wasn't a well-balanced program. And so she got really flared up. We had to back off for like a month, you know, cause she also had some stuff pre that was a little irritable. So like, I just think, unfortunately it was just not looking holistically like, okay, can we get a a hinge, a squat, a split pelvis, a step up, a step down, some hamstrings, some quads, some calf, some balance, like just trying to spread out her volume across all of it. And then just as like an advice to people is like, there's a lot of ways you can load the quad. You know, you can do it with squatting, sleds, split squats, step ups. You can get a lot of different mechanisms and movements. She just didn't tolerate squats, but she does great with step ups. Doesn't tolerate, you know, step downs, she does great with sleds. So we're just trying to do stuff that she feels comfortable with and give her kind of mini wins. I like it. Dan, what do you think? Yeah, a lot of good stuff here. Um, I'll try to be brief. Um, I think sometimes with clinicians, like we have a protocol, we're at week four or we're week eight, we got to do lunges, we got to squat, right? This is the next step. And then sometimes patients get to it and it's it's kind of provocative and irritating, right? <clears throat> it's like, well, you're at week eight, so we got to do it, right? <laughs> where I, don't, I don't think that always has to be the case. I ask a lot of questions to the point where it's kind of annoying to the patient. They're like, well, you're the boss. You decide what's going on. And it's like, well, I want to know how this feels because if it's not going well, we need to back off. And I set that expectation with patients. Like, all right, we're, we're ramping up. And I think this is the right choice, but let me know how you feel tonight. Let me know how you feel tomorrow. Take notes on this. And if you're not doing really well with it, we can back off, right? Or progress forward, depending. I think the last piece too, and I, I just mentioned this because I, I've done a lot of ACL kind of deep dive research lately. And uh, blood flow restriction has kind of been studied a decent amount with ACL folks. And it's interesting uh, because you look at these studies and when they compare BFR training for the quad versus like regular strength training, it seems <clears> like they're pretty similar, you know? So it's not like the BFR is, is crushing, right? And doing way better. But I think the other thing to keep in mind is that you're dealing with someone who has pain or some sort of, you know, irritation. And if you use blood flow restriction over heavier loading, you're probably going to get a very similar change in hypertrophy and strength. It's probably gonna be much less aggravating probably because you can really reduce the loads. So I think trying to be smart about your progressions and be willing to change them, it doesn't work well. And then if you are getting a ton of irritation, just do some BFR. I don't think it's going to set you back, right? Mm -hmm. That's a good way of there's also, scaling there's back. Also an, there's also an analgesic effect to BFR too. Um, you know, I do a BFR two weeks after surgery, and then I do that for the rest of their rehab, whether it's at, during the beginning of the rehab when they're doing all their leg raises, or if it's at the end when they did a full full program, squats, deadlifts, all that. And then I do BFR knee extensions at the end to really lock in the quads because we don't have a knee extension machine. Um, I think the BFR really has a, um, an assist in, in like an analgesic effect to that uh, extension mechanism, to that anterior knee. 
Yeah, I love that. I, I think the only thing I'd just caution against with BFR early <clears throat> after this is that we don't have to jump right into an aggressive set rep scheme, right? Oh, I think yeah. Sometimes yeah. you get locked in the, you know, 30, 30, 30, or 30, 15, 15, 15. Like, oh, that, that might be aggressive, too. You got to get there. But I love Dan's concept on, on decreasing the load. Um, and then, Jeff, I'm just going to take a step back and give you a little credit here and say that maybe this isn't necessarily that you are overworking the quad. Maybe you're doing everything right. And maybe you did increase your aggressive aggressiveness and quad strength in a beneficial way. I, I would say the primary reason that I've gotten anterior knee pain in my ACLs in my career has almost always come to motion, right? Not from overdoing their quad, right? So maybe you're emphasizing strength much, much more, and maybe they don't have full knee extension, or maybe their patellar mobility is down and, and that is causing some of the issues. So I, I would say is, is make sure their motion is still good, right? Maybe it's not that you're doing too much, but maybe their patellar mobility or their knee range of motion is down a little bit. I think those can lead to anterior knee pain sometimes even more often in my experience, right? So, um, you know, so I, I think put that all together with what everybody said could could really help though right is just make sure we're being intelligent with our application of load and not just being aggressive just to be aggressive but be intelligent and progressive this is a long progress right this is you don't have to be a super aggressive the first two to four weeks right you're going to be doing this with months in this person the key is that you're gradual and loading up over time and that you're getting them to that that period where they can stimulate a little bit of, of their load i think that would be fantastic so great question, Jeff. Really appreciate it. If you have a question like that, head to microhealth.com, click on that podcast link, and you can fill out the form to ask us a question. And please head to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, subscribe, rate, review. We would really appreciate it. We'll keep doing these, these episodes as long as you keep asking some questions. So we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much.